okay so let us now start discussion on this so what kind of a letter is this see this is not a usual referral letter is it because the reason why this letter is being written is here you can see that it is the nurse or a doctor in one community health center and the patient is moving to another city or another suburban area center village and therefore you are writing this letter to the community nurse or the medical officer of another healthcare facility for outlining the patient's story yeah? outlining their history requesting ongoing monitoring so what is the difference between a referral letter and a letter like this which is a transfer letter is that the referral letter would be for one specific reason when as a gp or as a nurse when you are referring the patient it could be for one specific issue that the patient is experiencing for example a bladder stone or for example kidney stones or uh, writing to oncologist for cancer or uh, writing to gynecologist for maybe a cyst so that is a referral letter where you're not handing over the overall care of your patient you're just writing for a specific purpose whereas here it is not a referral letter it is transfer because the whole care of that patient the whole case you are transferring to another department this can this type of cases you can also have as a general practitioner when you might have been looking after a patient for a while and then the patients decide to move to another city so you will need to write a letter to the general practitioner over there the local doctor over there who can be uh, you know taking over the care of your patient once they have moved into that area and as a nurse also it could be similar way so the this kind of letter would be known as a transfer letter where you are transferring the whole care of the patient to another healthcare professional so what we are going to do next is considering that this is a transfer letter uh, we are going to do an activity where we would be learning on what basis would we exclude information from this letter so i'm going to give you this five steps and I would want you to mark this bullet points with this five points. Okay, so why is it important to decide how would you exclude information is because when you are writing a referral letter or when you are writing a transfer letter, you may have a lot of information particularly if it is a transfer letter you may have a lot of information about that patient because the patient may be attending your clinic for two three five six seven ten twenty years yeah so you may have all the information so how would you decide what information is to be included or excluded so you have to keep two things in mind the purpose and the target reader so here the purpose is outlining the patient's history and requesting ongoing monitoring and then in the last date you can find out some information which is relevant to their current situation so what happens most of the time in the exam is uh, when i actually discuss the answers with students or when i actually discuss how they performed in their weekly mooc test or in their mooc test they would say that i knew this point was not required but still i wrote it and this happens even it has happened with many of the students in the real exam they knew that they should not include that point but then they thought if i don't include it it could be a risk let me include it at least i have written something about it and that is disaster that is disaster believe me because if you include a lot of information in your letter everything is going to get affected because the writing task tells you to highlight the main issue so how do you highlight you can't use capitals right you can't use a highlighter 
So how do you highlight the main issue is by excluding the minute details or by excluding your relevant information. So this is the five uh, step strategy or five reasons which you can keep in mind whenever you are excluding information so that you can be 100% sure of what information is to be included or to be excluded. So please write down these five points in your book because I'm going to take this away because it is affecting the screen. So write down these five points in your notebook or a piece of paper. And then I want you to mark each bullet point in this case notes with one, two, three, four, five. So there is three year history given here from 2016, 17, 18, and then you have some information about 19 as well. So the information that you think has now become outdated, you would mark it with number one. Then there will be some information where uh, the main idea would be given as well as some minute details will be also given. So what you have to do there is, you have to mark it with number two, which means that you would exclude the minute details and you would only pick up the main idea. Because one of the good aspect or one of the way in which you can write good summary is by excluding the minute details and by picking up the main idea. Then third reason for excluding certain information could be that it is not relevant for the reader for that specific purpose. So as a doctor, they may, you know, they may need to know everything, but is it relevant to their purpose? Or as a nurse, they may need to know everything, but is it, is it relevant to the purpose? If it is not relevant to the purpose, you would mark that information with number three. Then you would see that in this letter, there is some information which is repetitive. So those information, you know, if they are repetitive, what you can do is instead of writing them in separate dates, you can write one generalized statement about it using appropriate tense. So those kind of uh, bullet points can be marked with number four. And there will be some uh, points which you will see that when you were handling this patient at that point of time, they were very important. But now when you are writing this letter, those problems are no longer relevant because they have already been managed or tackled or handled. So you don't need to include them. So mark those points with bullet number five, right? Go ahead with this activity. Each bullet point within this case note is to be marked, not each bullet point, obviously, only those things which you are going to exclude. You have to give out a reason for it. Why would you exclude it? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, go ahead.
Okay, so I hope now everyone has been able to do that. So again, I want to open up the discussion. So what are we going to do for the current medications? whether we would include it or not. You can put your microphones on and participate in the discussion. We will include it. Uh, yeah, one of the reasons why this letter is being written is, uh, here it is mentioned, it is very, very important. Yeah for them to, it says that they are still missing the dose, refuses to change their diet, patient continues to require monitoring and encouragement. So definitely we are going to include this medication. Would we need dosage and frequency as well or would we just write the name of medication? We would write the name of medication and the dosage. Yeah, because so there are two situations. If the target reader is responsible for monitoring the patient's medication, then it is must that you write the name and the dosage. If the target reader is not particularly responsible for, for managing the or monitoring the medication compliance, only in that case, it would be possible to exclude them. Okay, now about September 2017, you are writing this letter in 22nd, on 22nd Jan 2019. So what are we going to do about this information from September 2017? Which points would we include? And the point for the points that you are gonna exclude, which a number would you give it to them? For which reason would you exclude them? One, two, three, four, five. We include the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would yeah. I need to say how long have they had it? August 2016. Would I need to mention the year? Yes. Yeah. The year will be necessary if it's okay if I don't mention the month. Okay, then how about other points? Patient lives at current order. Hmm. Life managing dietary requirements. Yeah, um, but if you look at the present... <coughs> no, but if you look at the present situation, he is moving to stay with daughter. So, do you think this is, uh, you know, any longer a concern for us that his wife was cooking and now the wife has died? No. Because I'm not writing this letter to tell them what happened uh, year wise. I'm mainly trying to outline the relevant medical history the history, the medical history. And I'm trying to highlight the issues that the target reader will have to be aware about so that they can plan their care accordingly. So if I would say the patient leaves alone, it would be factually now wrong because now they are going to move anyways to the daughter's house. And wife managing dietary requirement, that is no longer correct because now the wife is no more. So what number would I give to this? One, two, three, four, five. What number would I give? Three. Three? Okay, why three? No, because it is not relevant now. It's not relevant for the purpose for which I'm writing the letter. Or I can also consider this as outdated information. And how about this fasting blood sugar? 
what am i going to do for that would i need that no, we can ex uh, we can exclude we can exclude that. we would exclude that yeah. yeah what number would we give for that two two or one no. isn't it one outdated outdated right so this can also happen when you are writing the referral letters you may have physical examination findings of three different visits but when you are writing the letter the previous examination findings become redundant outdated okay and what would i do about this point gp recommended dietary management it is repetitive repetitive yeah. yeah so i would generalize it right mm. so what number would i give to this four four so when we are generalizing it it, it doesn't mean we are excluding it but we will write one single statement for it we won't go into year wise summary of that or month wise or date wise summary of that right so this is what helps me with conciseness and clarity okay then december 2017 what points would i include from that visit i think patient non diet mm -hmm. yeah is like very repetitive and it comes on frequently so we frequently can... yeah so i can mark that as number 4 because that is still now an issue so i'll have to write a uh, one summarized sentence about that instead of writing it uh, visit wise okay what i what would i do about the depressed and grieving would i need that point no ma no mm -hmm. because after this particular date we do not have such evidence the current scenario doesn't give any such evidence and another reason is um uh, so what what number would i give 1 2 3 4 5 which number would i give for this depressed and grieving 1 1 uh or would i say that it is not relevant for the purpose for which i am writing this letter because in the purpose it nowhere says that they are supposed to monitor the patient's emotional state or they have to do any uh, kind of mental status examination so for two reasons you can exclude this depressed and grieving one is because it is outdated and because it is no longer relevant for the purpose that is why we keep two things in mind who is the target reader and what is the purpose so as a doctor they should know that they had an they had an episode of depression or grieving or as a nurse they should know but if you look at the current situation they do not have any such problem so that is one reason why would it, why we would exclude it and two we don't want them to do anything specifically for that there is not nothing to be observed or there's not there's no information which says that they may need referral to someone it doesn't say that they may need uh, counseling or mental health support nothing like that okay then march 2018 what points would we include from this visit metformin was prescribed metformin was prescribed hmm now here also when we write about current medication we are going to write about metformin so would you think i would need to specify that it was prescribed on march 2018 or can i simply write it as his current medication i think we mm -hmm. write it as current medication yeah, we don't need to exactly say on which date it was started Uh, again because i'm not writing to endocrinologist to tell him what to changes are to be made in his treatment the treatment is going to be the same the gp or the nurse has to just monitor 
that the patient is taking medications regularly. So in that case, it may not be necessary to tell when it was started. It can be simply mentioned as a uh, current medication for the patient. And how about other points? What number would I give to this portion? One, two, three, four, five? Four. Four. Yeah. Repetitive. Repetitive. Yeah. So this is true for all the case notes that you have, right? You can do, you can keep this five points in your mind so that it gives you 100% surety that whatever information you have excluded is with a logical reason that you have excluded. That is the reason this activity has been designed because that is the main trouble that students have and that is the main reason why it could lead to disaster. I have seen a lot of students scoring really well otherwise, being really good at English, they score very poorly in the real exam because that, you know, because of that fear. If I don't include it, this is my last chance. So let me include it at least somehow let me include it. And that, uh, you know, ruins the whole performance because when you include so many of minute details, of course, it will not remain a concise summary. And then it is going to affect every criteria because the purpose is lost. You have written information which is not relevant to the purpose. Um, because you have included so much of information, the main content cannot be highlighted adequately. So always, whenever you are getting a task, it is not that you have to summarize everything that is given. You have to just pick up the points which are relevant for the target reader, and then you have to expand and elaborate on those points rather than trying to summarize every point that is given there. Right? So do not have this dilemma of, you know, let me include it. I know it, I shouldn't include it, but let me include it because if I don't include it, then I'm going to lose mark for it. So don't have that dilemma. It can be disastrous. So if you keep these five things in mind, you would be able to logically think whether I should include it or exclude it. Okay, June 2018 visit. What would I do about that visit? What information would I need from this? He had an episode of MI. Mm, yeah. And, and was managed. The treatment and the medication after that. Okay, so would I need to write this aspirin and streptokinase infusion? No. 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 Yeah, so only this only the ongoing we have already included uh, in the current medication. Current medication, right? So in this portion, what number would I give if I'm excluding the aspirin and streptokinase? And uh, what, what would I do about the symptom? Would I need them? No, no so, they can just mention the diagnosis of and, yeah. uh, previous MI and atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation, yeah, because we have to keep the audience awareness in mind. So the nurse or the doctor would be able to understand if we say MI, they would be able to understand what symptoms would be there. Okay. And would I need to write about ECG? No, ma'am. No. no, because diagnosis was confirmed. Okay, And my purpose is not to help them diagnose it. So what number would I give here? Not relevant. Not relevant? No. no. It is it part of very minute. Minute details. Detail, yeah. Yeah. It is number two. Yeah. Because I can't completely exclude this. I have to include it. But I have to just pick up the two main ideas. Myocardial infarction, natural fibrillation. And rest of the details can be excluded. The ECG, the symptoms, in which hospital they were hospitalized. And at that point of time, what treatment was given? So that will be number two. Okay, then October 2018, was it here? Because June to August, it is given that the patient attended twice weekly, but there uh, doesn't seem to be any problem as such. So what would I do about October 2018, was it? What points would I need from this visit? We include signs of diabetic signs. neuropathy. Diabetic neuropathy. neuropathy yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Here also, let me mark fibrillation and MI. Hmm. 
okay and how about other points restricted mobility poor exercise tolerance respiratory tract infection i think we should include poor exercise we should But include that, that comes we have i mean mentioned that before also restricted mobility we should include it yeah that's because of diabetic neuropathy yeah. so maybe we can include this entire point as one sentence yeah okay how about the respiratory tract infection no no mm. so what number would i give to that one five five yeah the problem has already been managed or tackled and how about this non compliance with diet and then certain options that we discussed with them non compliance with diet is it still continues in january so mm -hmm. so non compliance with diet can be marked as four repetitive four, yeah and how about the alternatives that we discussed would i need them no because patient is going to no. stay with his daughter now so hmm so what number would i give not relevant not relevant and uh, you can also say that it has been already tackled now so what was happening at that point of time is that he was not willing to accept any of the alternatives that we had suggested but now he has willingly accepted and he is actually moving to that part so this issue has also been now resolved and therefore you may not include this okay and from today's visit we would need all the points from today's visit because it is the most updated information that we have about the patient right and this appears to be the main focus of the entire letter because uh, here it says the last point that the patient is now moving to stay in center valley with the daughter right? so you can see that a lot of portion from this case note even though at first glance it appears to be very dense case note with lot of information but if you logically keep the target reader in mind and if you uh, keep the purpose of writing in mind there is lot of information which can be excluded even though at first sight they may seem to be a very important piece of information for example the fasting blood sugar you may think it is very important but then it's a uh, you know 3 year old report or 2 year old report that you are talking about so this strategy if you remember this five points or obviously you may not need to actually do this we did this because you get a clarity on how you can exclude it but if you keep this five reasons in mind while you are excluding it could be very helpful for you and it can give you confidence that whatever information you have excluded is logically excluded that is not um, just with any any assumption as such you have solid reason to say why have you excluded that in so that confidence is very helpful because in that 45 minutes time when you have to decide those things it can be challenging and you have to multitask there because you will have to interpret the case notes exclude then the next step would be to do paragraphing so if you are in dilemma it can consume a lot of time so it has happened with a lot of students that for the initial 20 25 minutes they were just thinking how to write the letter so if you do not have clarity on this point it it can be confusing at that point of time okay so this can be a very helpful exercise now what i want you to do next is i want all of you to plan your paragraphing okay in which paragraph how would you organize the information so there are two points you need to keep in mind for paragraphing one is the problems related to one or the ideas related to one problem are to be written in one paragraph 
and you have to also think about priority so you have another 5 minutes to decide how you are going to organize this information and then i'll discuss that with you Okay, so now shall we start discussion on paragraphing? Ah, uh, what all timelines are important here for us? What all timelines would we need here? That is an important consideration, isn't it? Because ah, uh, while deciding your paragraphing, one way of ah uh, having your paragraphing is to go timeline wise. So, what all timelines do you think are important here? August two thousand sixteen. Yeah, because we'll need to say for how long they have diabetes. Yeah. Then uh, March two thousand eighteen because he was commenced on metformin then. Yeah, I slightly disagree with that because uh, metformin is going to be mentioned as their current medication instead of saying when was it. commenced i am not writing to the endocrinologist uh, who would need to know for how long they have been taking this medication i am writing to a general practitioner who is supposed to monitor the patient's medication compliance so it is true i would need to include the august 2016 that is true 2018 october 2018 and 2000 
June 2018. June 2018, when they had myocardial infarction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those two timelines are important for me. So definitely in this case, I don't need to go visit twice. Do I? Do I need to say what happened in each visit? Mm -hmm. No, right? So what paragraphing would I go with? What is the topmost priority that I would include in my second paragraph? And yeah, of course, the first paragraph, because in first paragraph, we usually include diagnosis and the purpose. So here we have three different points for writing about diagnosis. You have diabetes, then you have uh, hypertension, you have uh, diabetic neuropathy. So what would I include as a diagnosis? diagnosis in the introduction paragraph. Type 2 diabetes. Type 2. Hmm. Yeah. With signs of diabetic neuropathy. With signs of diabetic neuropathy. Can I think of a, an appropriate adjective for type 2 diabetes? Diabetes mellitus. Adjective I'm talking about. Hmm. A, a, a word that would help them understand that, you know, it is not like other uh, cases where they may have diabetes, but they are just maintaining it really well with medication. This is not that kind of case, right? So what? Uncontrolled. Yeah. Would I say uncontrolled? Would I say uncontrolled or would I say poorly controlled? Poorly, poorly, poorly controlled. Poorly controlled. Because. Uh, we don't have such evidences of, you know, having admissions because of ketoacidosis. So we don't have such uh, piece of information. But yeah, we have two evidences that the blood sugar levels were high, and the diabetic neuropathy also suggests you that probably, uh, you know, the blood sugar levels are not well managed. So yes, in the introduction paragraph, you can mention poorly controlled or poorly managed diabetes, and the purpose of writing is to because he's moving to stay with his daughter in that area. That is the reason why we are handing over the care. That is the reason why we are transferring this patient into their care now. Okay, what would I include in my second paragraph? Current medications. Current medications. So current medications, I would also... Diagnosis. Have... Diagnosis, yeah. So do you think... Oh, second... David. Yeah. So would I include... All the disease conditions and all the medications in second paragraph, or would I see? I have two options. One option is that um, you know I write second paragraph about what all disease conditions he has had and what all medications are they taking. And another way is I can only focus on diabetes in the second paragraph, and then I can write a separate paragraph on the issues other than diabetes. Which one would be more appropriate? Um, issues other than the diabetes. First, first focus on diabetes and then yeah, issues. Diabetes. Hmm. Because if you see the myocardial infarction, fibrillation, diabetic neuropathy, there, um, sorry, the, those two, three issues, hypertension, there, you know, only the medication compliance can be an issue. Otherwise, you don't have much to write about it. So one way of paragraphing could be that in the second paragraph, you include all the details related to diabetes, okay? And another way of writing this could be in the second paragraph, you write all the medications that they have been taking. And if you include all the medications in second paragraph, then definitely you will have to give the reasons for which they are taking this medication also in second paragraph. So in that case, how your paragraphing would be is uh, all these points is diabetes we are anyways going to include in the introduction paragraph if you don't write year in introduction paragraph then in second paragraph you can mention year then the myocardial infarction, hypertension, this two also in second paragraph. If you go 
by writing all the medical issues in second paragraph and if we write all the medical issues and medication in the second paragraph what can we focus in the third paragraph what would we write in the third paragraph patient is non compliant so yeah the issues from the patient's side drinking alcohol forgetting medication so all the issues from patient's side here also it says still misses the dose of medication often takes double dose continues to eat sugar a sugary food so this points issues from the patient's side can be included in third paragraph and then if you go with this format then of course diabetic neuropathy and exercise tolerance would also go in second paragraph because you are focusing second paragraph on all the medical issues that they have and then in fourth paragraph what would we write in the fourth paragraph he is moving with his daughter to center will that we will be writing in the introduction paragraph because that is the purpose for which we are writing this letter so then we would emphasize the need i uh, yeah emphasize the need to encourage this points patient needs encouragement last bullet point is for me i have decided to refer the patient so i would not need to include that in my letter as such and alternatively in the third paragraph also i can write this point because in the third paragraph i am writing about his non compliance so in the same paragraph i can tell them that you please monitor because he is non compliant with the medication so that is also a possible way of paragraphing and what about this point doctor requires education on patient's needs and monitoring where would i include this because doctor needs to be educated so the doctor or the nurse we are writing the letter to needs to educate the doctor about the patient's care requirement and the requirement for their monitoring so can i put it in the fourth paragraph fourth yeah. the request one request pertaining to the patient and the other request was pertaining to the education to the doctor right so this can be one way of paragraphing where in the second paragraph you will write the entire this point outline patient's history so all the history will be in the second paragraph where you would say that uh, they are on this this medication and that they have diabetic neuropathy this is how they walk about the physical intolerance or poor exercise tolerance then in third paragraph you can mention what all issues are there so in that you can include about the alcohol intake about uh you know not exercising not uh, uh managing their diet appropriately forgetting their medication dosage because of poor memory and then you can request them because of this this issues you need to monitor their adherence to the medication and there are a lot of uh, points which say we provided education so this you can put in the form of a complex sentence because here it says gp recommended then uh, here also it says that we referred him back for monitoring but he is still non compliant then here also it says that we encouraged him to take medications regularly so you can put it in form of complex sentence in spite of repetitive instructions or in, in spite of uh, you know persuading him he has not been able to comply because that that would be your generalization that you have educated him or you have tried to persuade him to take his medications he is still not able to do so you can put it in a complex sentence where you can say although uh, on multiple occasions uh, we have tried to persuade him he has been unable to 
follow the treatment regimen and therefore you need to monitor his medication compliance or in spite of encouraging him on various occasions to take his medications regularly he has been unable to follow the instructions so please monitor his adherence to the medication so you can put it in the form of complex sentence so they get to know that it is not that um, we haven't done anything about it we have uh, so it helps us to highlight that the patient is still resistant so if i would put it in the form of a complex sentence it would be clearly conveyed that he is resistant or he is reluctant to follow the advice in spite of trying on multiple occasions so for fourth paragraph we just need to focus on the point that we need to make the daughter aware of the education yeah. as well as yeah there are two ways if i am including this continuous monitoring and encouragement in third paragraph then the fourth paragraph will only focus on, focus on the daughter's education but if i have not included this monitoring and encouragement in the fourth in the third paragraph then that would also be there in the fourth paragraph so both the weight can be done and both are appropriate because in third paragraph also we are focusing on what all issues we have about his uh, compliance and in the same paragraph you can request them because he is poorly compliant you please monitor so in fourth paragraph in that case you would just write about the daughter although the daughter is ready to cook or the daughter is going to cook meals for him but she requires education regarding uh, the diet that the patient would need and regarding the monitoring of patient how to monitor his compliance to medication exercise diet so whenever we think about paragraphing um, it may not be practically possible for us to ensure that each paragraph are of equal length right so the focus is not on equal length paragraph the focus is on the ideas which are relevant to one issue are to be put in one paragraph so don't worry if one paragraph is a very lengthy one and the other paragraph is just one line it would not affect your score negatively okay any other point that you want me to discuss from this letter because this is to be now written by all of you as homework and it is to be submitted the way you submit it uh, you know by typing it in the word file and sending it through email so feel free to discuss if you have any confusion about paragraphing and please strictly adhere to the paragraphing that we have discussed okay and let me show you the other way of paragraphing that we were discussing how what if we uh, highlight diabetes so that can be another way let me show that to you yeah so this can be another way of paragraphing where in the uh, second paragraph you can write everything related to diabetes because diabetes appears to be the main issue here so you can write about issues related to his medication and diet compliance then need for monitoring and about diabetic neuropathy third paragraph you can write about the medications for hypertension and mi and then fourth need for training the daughter so you can choose any of these two styles but don't mix and match them you need to add her to one style either you go with this kind of paragraphing or you go with the paragraphing that we just discussed Okay. is there any other question 
yeah that's a good question yeah you would need this pdf so you would be able to find this pdf this is test number 4 from classroom on your teachable if you will go to the classroom section this is test number 4 you would be able to find pdf of this task for both medicine and nursing students it is test number 4 Yes, and all of you, please make sure when you are sending in the letter. I receive from a lot of students. So if you don't write your name on the word file, it is very difficult for me to distinguish once I have downloaded it from your email. So make sure that you are writing your name on the word file very clearly. You name your word file, okay? Not inside the word file. The name of your word file should be your own name. For example, if it is Rucha, okay, then I would write Rucha. Patel, and then what is the writing task? So this is class work test. So I would write class work test four. This is how you would be naming your word file. Please do so. It would be a, a huge help for me because it's really difficult for me once I have downloaded all the tasks to distinguish whose task it is. So name your word file with your own name and the task for which you have written the response. and uh, if any one of you does not have the email address let me re repeat the email address writing correction at the right oet please send on this email okay because the other emails are for other purposes so do not send on the email from which you are receiving this invitation that is only for the webinars this one is for writing correction so send your letter in a word file name your word file appropriately and then send it on this email address 